When we're measuring time, it's important that we do it the right way, and that includes knowing the difference between a wall clock and a monotonic clock. Now, I'm typically a Kotlin guy, but in this video, we'll start with a Java example. If you've worked in Java, you might be familiar with system.currentTimeMillies, and maybe you've used it something like this. Here we want to measure how long this long running process takes. So first we get the current time in milliseconds, then we let the operation run and when it's complete, then we again get the current time in milliseconds, and finally we subtract the first time from the second, and that tells us how many milliseconds the operation took. Now I've done this myself plenty of times, but this approach is potentially flawed because it's using what we call a wall clock when we really need a monotonic clock. So what's the difference? Well, the term wall clock can mean different things depending on the context. But when I say wall clock here, what I technically mean is just system time. So, you know, that time that you see when you look at the top right or bottom right of your screen, it just represents the current time of day. In real life, if you want to measure the time that some operation takes, you could do the same thing as we did in our Java code. You could jot down the current time of day, wait for the operation to finish, and jot down the time after it's done, and subtract to get the difference. But hang on, let's rewind. The problem is that while you're waiting for the operation to complete, someone could sneak up to the clock and set the time to something different. He might crank the time forward or maybe backward. Either way, when the operation finishes and you check the time again, your calculation is going to be off. Now, if you're like Mr. Grumpy Recalcitrant Man, you might be saying, Dave, what kind of sneaky's gonna go changing my clocks when I ain't looking? Well, any code with the right permissions could possibly change the clock, but the most obvious case is your operating system's time process, which uses something called network time protocol to keep your computer's time synchronized with a reliable external source so that it's always up to date. If your system time is ahead or behind the external time, this process will set it back to what it should be. You can see how the volatility of the system time makes it an unreliable reference for measuring time. So what should we use instead? Well, rather than a wall clock that shows the current time, we need something more like a stopwatch. When you use a stopwatch on your watch or your phone, it moves forward at a reliable rate. It doesn't matter if the time of day changes, the stopwatch is still only ticking forward. And that's roughly what a monotonic clock is. It's a clock that just moves forward at a regular rate, regardless of any changes to the current time of day. There are a variety of hardware timers that can be used as a time source for a monotonic clock, but the main idea is that they all tick forward at a regular rate and they're detached from the current time of day. The value that you get when you read a monotonic clock is not significant on its own. It's typically just a long integer and it might even be negative. It really only gains significance when it's compared to a second value from the same clock. When you do that, you get a duration in some particular time unit, like nanoseconds or milliseconds. So how can we use a monotonic clock? Well, back in our Java code, we were using a function called current time millis. And this function returns the number of milliseconds since the beginning of 1970 in UTC. But its source of truth is the system's clock so it's susceptible to changes from NTP or any other source. Instead, Java includes a function called system.nanotime, which uses a monotonic time source. So a quick solution here would be to simply change from current time millis to nanotime. And of course, remember that when you make this change, the result is now gonna be in nanoseconds instead of milliseconds. So you'll wanna update any code that's using that number. Remember, it's milliseconds, and then microseconds, and then nanoseconds. So we actually have to divide it by 1 million, not 1,000. So that's how we can get more reliable time measurements in Java. But as you know, I'm primarily a Kotlin developer, and Kotlin has some simple tooling that makes it unnecessary for us to manually record and subtract times. As of Kotlin 1.9, the timing API in the standard library is fully stable. And in the next video, we're going to take a tour through that API and we're going to see how it's designed to help us measure time more accurately and it helps prevent problems when we need to convert between time units like we did when we had to change between milliseconds and nanoseconds. I'm looking forward to it, so I will see you next time.